Um, good afternoon, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Uh, my name is Simon Ng, I'm from Civic Exchange, and I will be your host uh, in this afternoon. Um, before lunchtime, we had uh, a lot of very good discussion on renewables. And I remember very vividly, uh, right before lunch break, actually we had a lot of lively, uh, even smart, sparkling um, discussion uh, on the subject renewables and also the market reforms that we are consulting you know, with our general public right now. Now, um, I remember a lot of terms like targets, should we set in targets uh, for the future for renewables as well as for other uh, emission reduction uh, purposes? Um, I remember the term um, distributed generation, small scale kind of uh, generation, uh, innovation, innovative ideas, research and uh, development, um, solar energy, of course, wind energy, so on and so forth. Now, but one specific term that's been repeated again and again is government policy. Um, and of course, right now, uh, in the last month, actually um, in March, late March, the government has launched their latest consultation document on uh, future electricity market reform. And um, I think uh, it is most fitting for me to invite uh, our friend, uh, Christine Lowe, other secretary for the environment uh, of the Hong Kong SAR government to give uh, a keynote speech on this particular matter. Um, I don't need any introduction of Christine, so to save some time, Christine, please join me uh, to the floor. Thank you. Simon, thank you very much. What I'd like to do today is to share with you um, the issue on uh, our electricity market reform and renewables. As you can imagine, whenever government has a public consultation document, we are doing a road show around town. But today, your focus is on renewables, so we want to come from this focus rather than on some other presentation that we have put together uh, for the consultation uh, as a whole. Okay, now, just to bring everybody on the same page, why are we doing it, why are we not doing it before? Why are we doing it now? Well, there is a time frame to this because, as you know, the contract with the power companies will expire quite soon. So this is a good moment for Hong Kong to get back into the discussion of uh, electricity and energy related issues. And um, I'm not gonna go into these things because these things you know very well, safety, reliable, affordability, environmental protection, adding competition, these are all key objectives that uh, I would imagine any public official who are looking at their electricity or energy market would want to think through. Okay, now I think for us to discuss renewables, maybe we just go back a little bit to last year when we consulted the public on the fuel mix. And you will remember that we had 80, 86,000 uh, uh, responses. And at the time, we asked people uh, to consider whether they would consider purchasing electricity from the grid, from the mainland, uh, or power generation locally. Because our coal plants, are due for retirement in the foreseeable future. And you know the answer. The answer is overwhelmingly people were concerned about reliability. So the issue about buying grid power from China, people seem to say our concern on reliability is great, not yet this time. So now, one of the consequences of this is when our coal plants are due for retirement in Hong Kong, we will have to replace them. And in our document as a whole, we are proposing a fuel mix structure, which I will touch upon, that uh, will have a lot more natural gas. Now, however, of course, whenever we talk about electricity or energy, people want to talk about demand side management, energy saving, people rightly want to ask more questions about renewable, how can we get on this path to do it more seriously? So, when we think about going forward, what does it mean? Now, I do want to touch upon the issue of competition. If we wanted to have more than two suppliers, then we need to consider 
where the supply sources might be from. And you know, that was the reason why we considered that, uh, that we wanted to buy a, a fair amount of power, not one or two or three or four percent, but a decent amount of power, then obviously a supply source is the main land. But for now, we're not going to look at immediately doing that. Can we have a major local supplier in Hong Kong? In our document, I think we made it quite clear, it's very, very difficult to have a third major supplier. Distributed power, and Simon mentioned this, and obviously we talked about this this morning. To what extent can we have distributed power in Hong Kong? We think it's possible, but we think in the overall context of things, it will be relatively small for the foreseeable future. Now, on this basis, in our consultation document, we have proposed a few mix. This is how we would like to go forward. So we propose approximately half of our fuel mix will be natural gas. So this does mean building new natural gas plants in Hong Kong. Right now, as you know, Hong Kong is already importing about 20 3% of our total electricity from Diabank, which is nuclear power. We're suggesting that somewhere around 25% might be how we would go forward in the future. Renewables, coal. So can we look at renewables, coal, demand side management? This is one major area of our thinking going forward. So obviously today, you're most interested to look at the renewable side. Okay, when we talk about renewable energy, the government actually is currently, uh, and will be, uh, in the foreseeable future, the largest generator. We have, uh, of course, uh, very limited wind turbines in Hong Kong, but going forward, we will have the sludge treatment plant uh, coming into operation in the not too distant future. We will have uh, organic waste treatment facilities. The first one will be built by about 2017. We of course have landfill gas to capture, which we're trying to, which we are capturing. And we're also looking at future waste related plants where there will be energy. So there's a plan going forward. But if we add all this up together, including the ones perhaps in the future, we'll be talking no more than 2% as of this stage, as of this stage. So there's been discussion in the past about whether Hong Kong wanted to build uh, wind farms. We have relatively limited potential to do that. CLP has looked at one spot AGC has looked at another spot. Uh, these are offshore wind farms. They're going to be quite expensive. Uh, and then, of course, there's one area that we've discussed in Hong Kong about solar power, PV systems. Are they going to be on the rooftop and so on? Because we don't think in Hong Kong we have the land to put major uh, PV farms in Hong Kong. So they're going to be tied to something. So. How do we go forward on that? Well, when we talk about uh, renewables, we also have uh, tri-generation of buildings, biodiesel plants. How can we maximize, or optimize at least, um, this aspect? And these are related to buildings. So how can we go forward on that? Now, demand site management, the government has just pledged that we will make the government building stock of about 8,000 buildings more energy efficient. You know, we've done it for the last 10 years, and we've saved overall about 15% from government buildings. So we're going forward for another 5%. Now, some people have said, well, why can't you do more? Uh, we are interested to do more. It does require not just behavior change, because the more you do, the more you're gonna start having to spend money on retrofitting. 
So government is prepared to do another 5%. For the last 10 years, we've exceeded our 5% targets. So going forward, we're interested to, uh, to see how we can do that. Now the power companies is actually a very major stakeholder and partner with government, and this must be the case anywhere in the world. So again, working with the power companies, how do we encourage energy saving? Now we're talking about our framework, our scheme of control, the regulatory framework. As we negotiate the framework going forward, what is it that we can do to align interest so that we can save energy, we can perhaps encourage more renewables, and they can earn a fair profit. Right, so how do we do this? Now the energy saving document, I know many of you that I've spoken to have been looking forward to this document. This is the demand side. It's focused on two major areas. The big, big area is buildings. The other area is transportation. This document will come imminently. <laughs> Imminent means extremely soon. <laughs> okay, now, for the purpose of the scheme of control, there is a part in it that talks about what we might want to do. Uh, and perhaps the power companies can talk a little bit more about that. If you had some little gizmo device in your homes, in your offices, how might that propel you and help you to be more energy efficient? Should we build in something like this going forward? I think the power companies have done some tests of their own. They have some ideas. Who are the people? Not everybody, but who are the families, right? Or who are the households? Who are actually responding to <coughs> savings? Shall we do this as part of the scheme of control infrastructure. Okay, now another issue about efficiency and competition, it's about the grid. So we have Hong Kong Electric supplying Hong Kong Island, we have CLP supplying Kowloon and much of the new territories. It's kind of an 80-20 split. Um, shall we invest in beefing up their grid. Their grid is already joined, but since competition is one of our policy objectives, if we strengthen the grid, is it a good idea in Hong Kong for, for me living on Hong Kong Island to say, well, I want to buy power from CLP, and if you lived in Saikong, maybe you say, I like HEC, can I buy power from them? Now, obviously in Hong Kong, under the current structure, um, we have to make reasonably heavy investments for that to be done. So the question is, when we have done that, and maybe we can say, well, I have the choice to buy from the other um, supplier, but is it enough? Because many people, I think, outside this room will say, well, is it going to be cheaper? Is services going to be better? We can't put our hand on our heart and say it will be. So question, in the short term, in the short term, in the short term, maybe the capital investment necessary for the two to be better interconnected, maybe this is not the way to go as yet, because it means it will be more expensive for consumers. However, we're still interested to explore a longer term possibility of supply from the mainland. Now, if that is so, if that is so, one day if Hong Kong people are more comfortable with this idea, because reliability may be, uh, may be more possible, people feel more comfortable with that, then obviously we will have to strengthen the interconnection with the mainland. And maybe at that time, it's the right time to look at, obviously, strengthening the inter interconnection uh, of the whole territory. Okay, so what are we going to have to do now? Well, one is access to the grid. We know this is very important. We'd like to propose to the power companies that we should do government, power companies, 
joint study on grid access. And it may be that there are going to be new players. So the grid is essential to opening up the market. Secondly is enhancing the interconnection with China. That's another study we need to do. And then thirdly is uh, we would like the uh, power companies to publish more information about their segregated costs. Because I think there are some of you in this room who's been asking for more transparency in the past. Okay, now, going forward, what we are proposing is that we keep the scheme of control structure going forward for the next 10 years. This period is not too long, it's not too short. It gives us an opportunity to think about and work through quite a lot of quite complicated issues. Should we use the rate of return? Other people have said, why not use cap regulation? Well, our proposal, and that's ex explained in detail in the document, that we'd like to continue to use the rate of return. Now, I won't go into the details here because Michelle's going to hold up. My time is up very soon. So I will move on. Now, beyond the rate of return, there are a number of other areas we have raised in the consultation document. And I'd like all of you to give it some thought. We talked about enhanced transparency. I think that's popular with all of you. We suggested 10 years with government to extend for another five years at government's option. Tightening tariff approval process, because this is an issue that is very important for the public. Then are there going to be some improved incentives or penalties to enhance performance of the power companies, and what should these be? And then, of course, your main interest today about grid connection for renewable energy, and then the rate of return. And I think I won't go into that, because obviously the rate of return is going to be a big punch up. OK, so this really is it. The, we don't have any fixed view about how we should go forward. The, basic uh, issues that I put forward, we'd like to hear. This is what we want to hear from the public, and you have till the 30th of June. I'll just show that there are six questions. They extend beyond renewable power, but I understand today that you want to focus on renewable power. May I ask, um, there are what, 150 people here? Maybe apart from those who've come from outside Hong Kong, can you promise me that each of you will respond to our public <laughs> consultation? <laughs> yes? Yes? I'm, I'm assuming you're interested enough and you're here. So I hope you will all take the time to respond. Thank you very much.